Alright, so one of the biggest challenges I faced in my career and still continue to face till this day is keeping up to date with all the new things to learn about in the tech space. It almost seems like every single day there's new AI tools being announced, new cloud services being introduced, and emerging tech trends that are set to transform the entire industry. Now, as someone who has spent two and a half years working at AWS, one of the most fast-paced tech companies out there, I definitely felt the pressure to constantly improve my technical skills. But over time, I've been able to develop a few strategies that have helped me keep up to date with all of my learning goals. And so whether you're someone trying to prepare for a certification or learn a new programming language, self-studying is probably also something you've struggled with as well. Which is why in this video, I want to share with you the exact strategies I use to self-study technical things. These strategies have helped me effectively study new technical topics, and I hope they'll help you with your own tech learning journey. Let's get into it. The first strategy is what I like to refer to as start broad, not deep. A lot of times when we learn something new, it can be tempting to just dive straight into it. But what I recommend doing is to start by understanding the big picture. Let's say you're studying for a cloud certification. Instead of diving deep into learning about the individual services, try to get a broad understanding of the entire cloud ecosystem. This means getting familiar with the basics of the cloud, the different cloud deployment models out there, and also the benefit of cloud for companies. I'd also recommend mapping out the exact topics you need to study in order to get the certification. You can kind of consider this stage as setting a learning roadmap. By starting broad and understanding how all the different pieces fit in together, you can figure out what to study, what not to study, and how long the journey would take. Another example is when you're learning AI. Instead of focusing on tools like ChatGPT or MidJourney, you might want to consider starting off with learning the general concept of AI first. Try to get a basic understanding of how artificial intelligence works, the key principles behind it, and the different branches of machine learning and natural language processing. Also keep in mind that you don't have to be an expert on every topic or technology. Which brings me on to strategy number two, which is to learn just enough. What I mean by this is instead of trying to learn everything there is to know, focus on what you're interested in and what will push your career forward. Because at the end of the day, it's not about how many hours you study, but how many of those hours brought you closer to your goals. For example, when I worked at AWS, I had set myself a goal to become familiar with all the key AWS services so that I could have better conversations with the customers I was helping. To achieve this, part of what I did was obtain five AWS certifications. Now, even though there are 12 AWS certifications available, I stopped after completing the fifth one. This is because I noticed that I had already gotten a good understanding of AWS services and getting even more certifications will be adding less value to my technical skills. In fact, if I had spent more time getting additional AWS certifications, it would have given me less time to do other things like build AWS projects or making YouTube videos on this channel. And so what I learned from that was sometimes it's better to learn just enough rather than continuing to learn something and get diminishing returns. Now, this doesn't mean you should limit your learning and force yourself to only learn the bare minimum. Instead, it's to help you work smarter rather than harder, especially if you have a limited number of hours to study every single week. Once you've gotten a broad understanding of the topic, another very important step is to get hands-on. This means actually working with the technology and doing something practical. Let's take coding for example. Reading about Python or Java is one thing, but actually writing code and building a small project gives you a lot more insight around how the programming language actually works. It also makes you more confident that you've actually understood what you've learned. The same applies to other technologies like cloud and AI. AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, all of these have free tiers and you can start experimenting with the services at no cost. Now, while there are many ways to gain this practical experience, one platform I personally found very useful is Zero to Mastery. Zero to Mastery is an all-in-one learning platform for you to learn in-demand skills, get hired and advance your career. They have courses in cloud, machine learning, Python, and a whole bunch of other modern technologies. All the material is kept up to date and focuses on teaching you how to build real world projects rather than just the theory. What I love about Zero to Mastery is that with a subscription plan, you not only get access to all of their courses and workshops, but also a community of over 400,000 other students. Some of their workshops include career focused topics like how to land your first tech job and how to prepare for interviews. I've been taking their complete Python developer course over the past few months and it's been great in helping me build my Python skills. So, if you're interested in trying out Zero to Mastery, I'll leave links in the description below to five courses I personally recommend checking out. Thank you Zero to Mastery for partnering with me on this video. Another strategy that has worked really well for me is to gamify my learning. What I mean by this is transforming my learning process into something that's fun and interactive, kind of like a game. One example of what I do is set up personal milestones and weekly learning goals. So while I was learning AWS before, I had set myself a goal to understand a certain number of AWS services every week. 
And to make it more fun, I treated each service like a different level in a game. So what I did was I created a chart of all the AWS services I needed to master and I marked them off as I progressed. If you have friends who are studying the same thing as you, you could even take this a step further and create a competition. For example, having a shared chart or leaderboard where you could track how many hours you study in a week. And just like a game, the winners of the competition could be rewarded with something. By gamifying your learning, you'll be able to make studying a lot more fun and probably take the stress out of having to cram lots of technical information. The fifth and final strategy is to take good notes. Now, there's a bit of a debate with how effective note taking is. Some learners swear by it, while others claim they're better off without it. Everyone has their own learning style, but I want to share with you my personal approach of taking notes. When I learn something new, I like to create one page summaries or cheat sheets. Instead of writing down every single thing there is to know, I just document the key points. Because not only does this make it easier for me to refer back to, it also takes me a lot less time to write down all the notes. And if I ever forget the details of something, I can always Google it. Here's a great example of a one-page cheat sheet you could create for an AWS service. You could add in your own diagrams, examples, and screenshots to help you break down more complex concepts. The key is to write down the important concepts and information to help you understand and remember the topic better. Before we end this video, I want to share with you a bonus mindset hack that has helped me stay motivated. When you're studying for something and you don't feel like doing it, instead of saying, I have to do this, say, I get to do this. Remind yourself that there are many people in the world who don't have the privilege to self-study. Maybe they're raising a large family and have very little free time, or maybe they don't have the resources to access the online courses you can. Changing your mindset in this way can help you appreciate the opportunity you have to learn and grow. This mindset hack also helps you focus more on the journey rather than the end goal. Like sure, it's important to set goals, but sometimes we can get so caught up in achieving the goal that we forget to enjoy the journey. And so saying I get to do this instead of I have to do this can act as a little reminder for you. So there you have it, five strategies I use to help me with self-studying technical topics. Please give this video a like if you found it helpful and let me know in the comments below which strategy was your favorite. All right, bye for now.